The Forgotten City. It's a game you probably haven't heard of, or at the very least probably haven't played, and yet, based on its review scores by the major publications in the industry, it looks like it's slated to be one of the lead contenders for Game of the Year. And I'll be honest, I was browsing Steam one day, casually looking for a quick, bite-sized game to play, and I came across The Forgotten City. I saw it had fantastic reviews, people were recommending it highly, so I gave it a shot. And much to my surprise, it's phenomenal. I was baffled. We'll talk a little bit more about why the game is so good in just a few minutes, but I was honestly confused where this game came from because it seemed to come out of nowhere. I had never heard of the studio before. I didn't know what it was about and it blew me away. So I started looking, who made this game? Well, surely because it's so fantastic, it must be a team much larger and more qualified than even the team over at Activision that puts thousands of people on every single annual release of Call of Duty, and those games suck. So surely this studio has way more employees and way more talent at its disposal to make something that's really good, right? No. The Forgotten City was primarily made by one guy with the help of two others that filled in the gaps of his talent set with like coding assistance, and he consulted a few historians to ensure historical accuracy with regards to costumes, architecture, and the like. Now, if the name Forgotten City rings a bell, it's actually because this game originated as a mod that was very well received for Skyrim. It was primarily developed by a guy named Nick Pierce, who spent reportedly over 1,700 hours working on it, which is a lot to do by yourself. And when it launched for Skyrim, it was phenomenal. People loved it and were baffled at the writing quality, the cleverness, and just the sheer creativity that went into it. And so Nick, having seen the fantastic response to his work, decided that he could take this up a notch, give the game multiple endings, make the script longer, improve the graphics, animations, pretty much just turn all of the knobs up compared to Skyrim. And so he did that. Spent the next few years working on the Forgotten City standalone game, and here we are. But don't get it twisted, this game is so different from the base mod, most people who played the base mod will be very glad that they gave the game a chance. There's way more stuff going on here. There's multiple plot points that didn't exist in the original mod. All of the characters are reworked. All of the dialogue is reworked. There's four different endings based on your choices that all tie together. It's phenomenal. So even if you were one of those people that happened to play the narrative mod for Skyrim, give it a chance. Trust me. But what exactly did make this game so fantastic? Why is it in the running for Game of the Year? And why is it in my top two for Game of the Year right now? Well, I'm going to break it down. Now, I'm going to avoid very carefully big plot points that are spoilers. I'm only going to discuss the opening sections of the game and the footage I've been showing you and I'll show you throughout the rest of the video is very bland and the dialogue that you'll see on screen is not going to spoil anything. So rest assured, you can watch this video and go play the game, it's okay. But before we get into all of that, I do have to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this video, Keeps. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Well, I did because my wife's side of the family has a lot of issues with male pattern baldness. And for a long time, people just had to accept this. Like if your family is bald then you're gonna be bald, oh well, what can you do about it? It's genetic. But actually there are ways that you can treat it and even that you can treat it from home. Keeping your hair is no longer a privilege of the wealthy and famous. It's actually something that everyday people can afford and manage to do themselves in the privacy of their own home while still having 24 seven access to a doctor that works at Keeps that can walk you through all of the different questions that you might have with regards to the FDA approved medications that you're gonna be using to keep that head of hair. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, just go to keeps.com forward slash Luke Stevens or click the link in the description box below to receive 50% off of your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Luke Stevens. 
The game begins simply. You start speaking with a young woman that you meet outside in some sort of forested area. She says that she just saved you from the river and that she also saved someone else, but that he wandered into the ancient building that's close by and she hasn't seen him return. You can talk to her a little bit about her past, how she got there, ask for her name, or even ask questions about yourself, what your past is, even though she doesn't know much of anything because after all, she did just pull you out of the river. She's very cryptic, and the only information she gives you is that her name is Karen, though she does seem much better behaved than most. You tell her that you'll help her find the stranger that she pulled out before you, so you enter the same caverns, and inside, you find a body. He's hanging with an inscribed tablet nearby, and it turns out it's the man, the same one that you entered the cave looking for, though it looks like he's been here dead for far longer than he's been missing. When you read the tablet nearby, it describes his torturous existence in a way that can only be described as cryptic. The content of this message is very simple. Effectively, he's warning you not to go through the portal at the end of this byway. And the message makes it clear that if you do so, you will live the same torturous life that led him into, to put it in an algorithm friendly way, unaliving himself. But nonetheless, there's not much to do about it at this point, other than push into the same portal doing the exact opposite of what the message recommended. Once you walk through the tunnel, you're transported through a crazy wormhole of sorts, and you find yourself at the very end of it in a large cave that's filled with Greco-Roman architecture and a single man that's standing in front of you. You begin asking him questions, such as where you are, when it is, and what place you've stumbled upon. Well, it turns out that that portal transported you back in time about 2,000 years, and you are now in this secret, forgotten city. It's odd, but the people seem kind enough. But there's one very important thing holding this city together, or tearing it apart depending on which character you're speaking to. You see, there's a thing called the Golden Rule, and it governs all behavior in the Forgotten City. You see, if anyone commits a sin, everyone in the city will die. And this brings up all sorts of interesting philosophical topics that have been debated for, at this point, millennia, such as whether or not force can actually encourage moral behavior. If you're forced to do something under threat of death, are you actually behaving properly? Are you being moral if you're just doing so out of fear? And that topic is very central in this game. It's brought up time and time again, and it's actually pretty intelligently discussed. All sorts of different characters present different ideas that are intriguing, interesting, and get the player thinking in different ways as well. You see, the player character was brought to the Forgotten City because this character, the Magistrate Sentius, performed a ritual of sorts that summoned him to the altar, and that can only happen if Magistrate Sentius sees that the city is about to collapse thanks to somebody's breaking of the golden rule. In other words, if somebody breaks the golden rule in some variation within the city, Magistrate Sentius will sprint to the shrine and perform the ritual, bringing the player back, killing him in the process, but by bringing him back, it restarts the time loop and the cycle to the beginning of the day. What this means for gameplay is that if the player does something that they're not supposed to, in other words, if they sin by killing a character, stealing an item, lying to somebody in a very obtuse way, that will trigger the breaking of the golden rule. And in turn, all of these golden statuettes will come up, begin firing arrows at you, which would turn you gold if they strike. So you sprint back to the portal, he performs the ritual, the cycle repeats, and then you go back from the very beginning of the day, just like you restarted the game. However, like a lot of other time loop games that we've seen this year, such as Death Loop or 12 Minutes, you're gonna carry forward the information that you gained in that particular run. So you can cut a lot of corners as you learn more things, more tips and tricks, discover new routes, passwords, keys, things like that. Granted, it's not revolutionary, but it is fantastically well executed in this game. I have a standalone video coming actually too, coming for Deathloop, where I break down why I think that game actually is not very remarkable at all. In fact, it's far, 
far from a masterpiece in my mind. And in those videos, I'm going to break down exactly why. One of the reasons I think it isn't very good is because the time loop mechanic isn't actually much of a mechanic in the game, other than just allowing for the developers to force the player into replaying the same levels a hundred times over the course of a single run of the game. It's just shortcuts for sake of developer laziness as far as I can tell. It's not executed in a truly interesting or innovative way. Whereas in the Forgotten City, all of the branching options, all of the discoveries that will allow new doors to be opened and new ways to be explored, all of that is given to the player. Those keys are given to the player, and if you don't investigate, if you don't put two and two together, if you don't think critically, oh, that person lied to me when they said that based on what this person told me, so I can catch them in that lie if I go back and challenge them on it. And sure enough, if you go back, there's a dialogue option now, you can challenge them on it, catch them in the lie, and that leads to these dominoes falling. It's so phenomenally well executed, I can't even begin to explain it other than just asking you to play the game yourself so you can experience it. But the core gameplay loop isn't just based on speaking to people. Granted, that's a large part of it, remembering what people said, tying it together, challenging them on it later on because everybody seems to be lying to each other in this city. But beyond that, there's other things you can do as well, such as collecting items, solving puzzles, exploring new areas, which will allow you to discover discover certain people and things you didn't know about before. And all of this ties together when you can use this knowledge against characters that you previously worked with or spoke with, catching them in a lie or being able to hold it over them to get into some new area or get a new item or information that you need to progress somewhere else. There's just so many moments of incredible satisfaction in this game. When you think that you've caught a character in a lie and you work to prove it, and then it turns out you're right. It's fantastic. It's truly phenomenal. The developers have put so much time and effort into taking account of every possible branch that you could pursue, even to the point where about an hour into the game, after exploring a little bit, I thought to myself, wait, if the time loop works like this, I should be able to do this one action and the loop should be broken. Everything should break down and I should be able to go back to my time because the time loop will break and I'll be free. And that should be the end of the game. I'll try it. I tried it and credits rolled. It was amazing. Like I, I had actually stumbled on a, a secret additional ending for the game just by thinking about the mechanics and the story that they had presented to me, the player, for a couple of minutes and discovering what I could actually achieve as a result of that. It was one of the most incredible moments in gaming I've had all year, maybe in the last few years, because it was so truly satisfying. I solved it. I came up with it. The developers didn't put an objective marker where they said, hey, this is one of your endings. Pursue this one. I discovered it, it made sense, and it was justified in the game world. It was phenomenal, truly fantastic. But enough gushing, let's address the title of this video very specifically. You see, in my mind, Game of the Year is an award for exceptional titles that do the unexpected, that wow players, and that make notable achievements in the industry. And The Forgotten City has truly nailed all of these. It's polished, fantastically well thought through, and continually impresses the player. And I know that it's anecdotal, but I played through this game's eight hour or so campaign in one sitting. Not because I was just so bored that day, but because it was that compelling, I stayed up very late to see it all the way through because I was so engrossed. And that doesn't happen very often for me. Last time it happened was with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. <laughs> No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would be dead if I tried to do that because it's like a thousand hours long. No, no. And the game also sucked. Last time I did that was with Celeste. Way back when that launched, whenever it was, like a few years ago. Uh, I remember it was a very snowy day. It was cold. And I just decided to pop open the game on my Switch. And I tried it. And it was fantastic. In my mind at this point in the year, out of all of the games we've seen release in 2021, there's only two, maybe three, if you count Psychonauts 2 games that qualify for game of the year that truly were revolutionary, innovative, brand new ideas that were phenomenally well executed. 
and that would be the Forgotten City and It Takes Two. And I will be breaking down It Takes Two in a coming critique, so make sure to like the video and subscribe, and most importantly, subscribe and ring the bell so you see when that video comes out, because that game also took me by total surprise and is fantastic. But this game being made by mostly one person, but three people is just fantastic. And I cannot recommend you play it enough. So if you take any of my game recommendations this year, give this game a shot. I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised with what it has to offer. I'm not being paid to say that. I don't get anything if you do or don't. I'm just honestly amazed at what they were able to pull off here. I had a great time with the game and I want to share that great experience with you. So it's my two cents. Take it or leave it. But that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I love you all more than you could possibly know. Like the video, subscribe and ring the bell uh, so you get notified of new videos and the live streams that we'll be doing here on the channel in the future as well. Uh, so you can come out and say hi when we're playing games or just hanging out. I'd love to see you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.